I had talked about in the last video, uh, chapter 78, uh, about not getting the license plate uh, light. What I did is came over here and, and drilled this um, for it. I, I actually went to Napa and uh, picked it up. Um, I'll uh, you know what I'll do is I'll pull the ticket out sometime and tell you because I I talked about uh, um, how much it would probably cost but yeah now it probably won't work but anyway so um, let me go pick that up and I'll bring you back anyways uh, there it is and um, it's gonna go up there like that there's not a lot of room for the license plate. I, I needed to keep it up high because uh, I didn't want the bottom of the plate uh, getting into the rubber grommets of the um, the backup lights. But anyways, I'll uh, I'll bring you back and uh, I've got to go out and get a couple of screws, um, stainless steel screws. I had a couple but they're not quite long enough to go through there. So I've got to go out and get a couple more longer ones. So I've got a piece of two inch tube steel here in the vise. And as you can see, what I've done is cut this end off at an angle using the porter band. Now, what this tube steel is, is I've had this, I have quite a bit of uh, two inch tube steel, heavy wall tube steel laying around what I did and I'll take you over and show it to you um, I, I you can the receiver the back side of the receiver hitch on the the um, bumper this tube steel will actually fit into it and it's at an angle thus this angle up here um, it's maybe what I'll do is I'll shut you off. I'll take you over there and show it to you. I'll put it over there and show it to you. Oh, and by the way, I got that gallon of POR15 in today too. Okay, I'm bringing you over here for the second time. First time, for some reason, the camera f uh, filmed it in that, I, I guess it would be a landscape mode. But anyways, um, it was narrow. The picture is twisted. Um, I didn't get it, uh, did, wasn't able to edit it. I c might have been able to edit it where I could have turned the picture um, in a, an editing program first, but um, I didn't. I downloaded it, and um, anyways, we're back here. I, I left you over at the bench. was going to try and explain this, but it, it's better if you visualize it. Um, so it's gonna, what I did is I took a scribe, um, act as a compass, but I use it as a scribe to get that angle, cut that angle. Here is the piece up in here. Now this piece has got to be probably cut down a little bit to be able to weld some angle on the end so that the angle can come out and uh, be attached to that rear bolt um, that holds the airbag. The same thing would happen on this side too. It would attach to the rear bolt, holds the airbag. W once I get those angles on and this thing welded up, um, the only way you can get it out is to be able to slide it out with the bumper. Um, so as, as you slide the bumper out, this would slide out also. But there it is. What what happens is that I just stick that in the end of the tube. Um, once this is all together, that will be tacked together and then welded out in that position. So um, after that, it would become a rigid um, part. What it does, it braces the receiver on the hitch and it also braces the back bumper um, in, in case there was an impact, you know, uh, whether it be somebody, I back into something, somebody drives into the bumper, or I uh, backing up and tra uh, pulling a bumper pull trailer, I, I hit the trailer too hard with the thing. Um, which brings up a point, you know, on 
my RAM, I have a a backup camera that's mounted up in the tailgate that kind of shows you where you're backing up to if you want to put a hitch on to position the ball on the receiver of the trailer. I don't have that here, so um, either I put a camera on to help guide me or there is a very good possibility that I could be backing up and and uh, hit a trailer a little too hard. So it's added protection for the bumper. It's added protection for the uh, receiver tube. But anyways, um, yeah, there's that video uh, clip. Uh, again, it was the second one because I, sh for some reason, the camera shot it in the wrong um, mode instead of a portrait mode it shattered in I guess a landscape mode whatever it was sideways when you perceive or uh, viewed it it would be sideways but I'll bring you back you're looking at my desk and if any of you probably in some of the videos it has popped up that I had a laptop well, that laptop broke. What happened is the hinge on the the cover, the screen, the hinge where you flip the screen up and down broke on it. I called the people up and they says, well, it's really past warranty, but we'll, we'll give you a free fix on it. Well, there was, but you, I had to take the thing and ship it to California. Um, and everything that was that was my only source of computing. Well, I I have a tablet, a night tablet, um, iPad, and a phone. But that was the program for editing videos was on that, along with everything else. All of the videos that I have uh, had taken, but hadn't uh, gone through the process of editing were on, in that hard drive. <clears throat> what happened is I came in this morning and opened the laptop up. Again, the hinge was broken and it had cracked the casing from the hinges um, below the screen. I came in this morning, opened it up, and you have to open it very gingerly because of that issue. Opened it up powered it up and the screen had blank uh, black spots in it. It also had rainbow colored stripes on one side and the bottom where the toolbar is was all fuzzy and you couldn't do anything. So um, I screwed around with it to see if I could just drag the mouse down and try and find uh, again, it was fuzzy and nothing was distinguishable in there. I, I dragged the mouse down or the cursor down and tried to click on things. Got some things to open, but you really couldn't do anything because, again, the taskbar is all blurred out. Um, make a long story short, um, the solution was either get a new computer or we came up with the idea of I had this, it was a TV um, for, from my wife's room um, in, in at home. And I never used it. I don't watch TV, so I never used it. So I went and got that. Um, we got a cord to run from the laptop over to that. I had to go to Best Buy, pick up a keyboard and another mouse. Um, but that's what I'm doing is I'm just running the computing system through a monitor and a separate keyboard um, for now. I, at some point in time, I'm going to have to actually uh, get it. But uh, it seems like every time I turn around, something is breaking and you never know what you can get anymore. You know, one of the things that I started to tell you about, but I never told you, was that tail light line, uh, light. I kind of joked in the last video about probably having to pay a hundred bucks for this thing, but it was it wasn't a hundred bucks. So, a year 
and a half ago, I bought one of these things for um, the International, and I paid $22 for it. This one was 49 So it wasn't um, 100 bucks, but it was more than double what I paid for it a year and a half ago. So the second thing is, is in a previous video, um, I had talked about the perils of trying to get somebody to um, do an alignment and uh, change a tire on the car. Now, I've gone through this. I had the car. Uh, it turned out that the original tires that were on the car were worn, but they were worn in a peculiar manner. Um, just the inside edge was worn down to the actual steel building cord on all four tires. I originally, I thought it was only on the front right hand side tire. I replaced that and then a week later noticed that the, I had the same issue on all the tires. So I took it into a dealership and had them do an alignment on it and put on three more, uh, three new tires. This being the uh, tire that I had replaced, um, I had bought by myself, but they put the other three on and did an alignment on it. Went to get it inspected. Guy says, your front right hand tire is completely bald. I says, that's impossible. It's got less than 2,000 miles on it. So he takes me out and shows it to me. And he was right. Apparently, it's not aligned properly. So in the previous videos that I did, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I had talked about trying to find somebody to do this. I have gone, th made more phone calls and gone through more people not calling you back um, stuff but finally next Monday this coming Monday I have an appointment to take it in put it get a new tire on it and get an alignment realignment done on the car and I, I told them now again I, I even with this dealer I had problems getting I, I I was recommended this dealer by my tool guy. I called him up, called, uh, it's a girl service manager that he told me to call. I called her up. Um, she took the information, gave me a price on how much the tire was gonna cost, said that their alignment machine was broken and maybe I should take it to another dealer. I says, listen, I'm talking to you, you were recommended. What I want you to do is take the car, uh, replace the tire, and then if you have to take it to another dealer to get it aligned, uh, so be it. Uh, you do that, you handle that. I don't wanna be involved in multitasking through a bunch of different dealers to do it. I want you to do the entire thing. You just charge me for it. <clears throat> She says, okay, I, I've got to get a hold of the other dealer, find out when they're available to do it, I'll call you back. Never called me back. About four or five days later, because I had to go out of town for something, four or five days or maybe six days later, I call her, um, get her voicemail, leave her a voicemail, say, call me back, you never called me back, um, give me a call back now and tell me what you found out never called me back had to call her again and get her on the phone and um, she tried to blame it on never getting a call back from the other dealer um, but anyways the appointments made I'll let you know what happens uh, but it's just ridiculous the stuff that you have to go through dealing with people now or getting people to do anything. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Just a quick shot here. Um, I'm building the wiring harness that's going inside of that tube. I just wanted to show you, um, I, I've got all the stuff laid out here on the bench and 
probably what I'm going to do is keep it laid out here on the bench and use this as a designated kind of wiring harness build site. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, that's just for the tail lights and um, those three button lights in the inside of it. Um, the rest of the harness will be coming outside of the tube and kind of be built there um, along with the seven-way plug uh, for the trailers. So taking a little break from doing that electrical work, um, what I did is came over here um, and pulled the rear bumper back off of again and got the cross member that I'm going to build out of it and then um, welded the two ends on it. So I welded those uh, two ends onto the bracket and what it'll do is I pulled the two end bolts out and then what I have to do is um, fit this back into the bumper back into it again but I, I don't think I can get um, uh, this in without this into the frame rails without taking the bumper off so that I can slide it out all the way um, because of the size of the bumper the two flanges on the top and bottom um, you wouldn't be able to get it out um, you wouldn't be able to rock it this way because uh, the pieces of angle iron that stick out protrude out on the ends of it would interfere with you being able to do that so um, yeah, got it out. Um, what I'm gonna do is, to, like I said, I've gotta put this back in again, and then test fit the tube back up to the end of it again. Um, what I'll do is tack it, bring the welder over here, tack it all out so that um, I can get the bolts through the end plates, and then uh, mark it out where the holes have to be um, tack it like I said pull it back apart I'll probably take it back over to the welding table and weld the whole thing out over there um, I might be able to weld it out over here but one way or the other it'll get welded out then after that um, um, bring it back fit it on make sure everything is aligned everything works and then I'll have to pull it apart and paint it with that uh, PUR15. But anyways, it's coming along. So I'm back here over to the back of the truck and what I did is was able to mark and then drill. Um, I marked it, took this piece out. Um, now I am able to finagle it out without um, having to take the whole thing out. But I was able to get it out, drill it, and uh, it's bolted in to that bolt. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, bring the welder over and tack this thing out, tack it out good so that I, I'm positive that it will stay in place when I take it apart and then uh, be able to take it back over to the welding bench, weld it out good. And uh, yeah, most of it can be probably welded out in place. There's just those overhead welds that would be on the bottom of the tube here and be on the bottom out here that probably aren't going to be able to be welded in place. but. Um, it's got to come apart anyway so that I can get that uh, POR 15 on it afterwards. Okay, so I've got the welder over here now and I was able to uh, get a couple of tacks onto it. Uh, a tack down there at the receiver and a tack up here. Well, it's probably a little more than a tack, but a tack up there to... Um, up on the cross brace up there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I can't uh, hold the camera and weld at the same time. I'm gonna weld out as much as I can on this thing. 
Um, as I had talked about before, this cross brace, I was able to get it out before by angling it and twisting it and, and able to get it out. But now once it's welded to this thing, uh, logically it's not going to come out of there unless I slide the entire unit out as a hole and it will come out with the, the rear plate, rear bumper assembly. Um, but that's the only way from now on that, unless I cut it off, um, that's the only way from now on that's going to be able to be uh, taken out or put back in is it, is it a whole assembly. But anyways, um, I'm going to weld this out or weld out as much as I can on it. And then um, what I'm going to do is take it out and uh, take it back over to the welding table so that I can um, weld out the bottoms like I had talked about, um, add any more weld that I might want to, and then uh, prep it for um, getting that POR 15 on it. Um, probably I, I've got to take that car over Monday, so I uh, probably won't do any painting until the car is actually out of the shop so that uh, don't get any overspray or anything like that onto it. But anyways, um, I'll bring you back. So it's off and um, I've got it uh, kind of strapped up so it just doesn't pivot down because of the way it was slung. Um, there's really not a good way to sling it without uh, it tipping one way or the other, but I'll get it over there um, and we'll get it welded up, the rest of it welded up, cleaned up, and uh, get some of that POR on it. I'll bring you back. So I got it over here to by the welding bench. I got it flipped over so that I can weld the underside of those things. I had to... Uh, take a little break and, and do a little haul. As you guys know, um, or some of you may know, but there's an electrical contractor that's next door to me here. And um, he had to replace a power pole at a customer's uh, residence. Um, and I had to go pick up um, a telephone pole or a power pole, light pole, um, and haul it up to his restaurant or residence I had actually got the address off of uh, off of him um, yesterday, and when I left last night, I went up to uh, there because I kind of knew the area and knew that it would be a very tight, and it was extremely, extremely tight um, to get into his driveway. I actually didn't think that I could make it, but I. Um, uh, picked up the pole this morning um, and then went up there. I took Matt, my grandson, with me just so that I, he could kind of give me guidance. Near road, ditch, um, his driveway crosses a ditch and um, there's two big like oak trees or maybe maple trees on each side of the driveway down towards the the center so it was extremely tight to get that uh, 40 foot deck trailer into it but I did get it and uh, um, I'll, I'll throw a picture of the pole on the trailer after I got up the driveway um, we just rolled it off on the side and I'm not sure how he's gonna set it but uh, yeah, it was uh, qu quite a fiasco but anyways it turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to, but I've got it over here, going to weld out the bottom sides, make some uh, other welds on it, and then um, get it prepped for putting that uh, um, POR on it. I'll probably shoot a some, uh, maybe some small clips tomorrow as I, uh, as I do that, uh, but we're getting close to the end of this chapter. Okay, so I'm over here. It's the following morning, and uh, I, I welded out those bottom parts of the tube that comes out for the brace. 
Uh, I got that welded out. I uh, There was a gap in here. I got a small piece of uh, scrap metal that I stuck in there. It was kind of almost like a wedge shape. It kind of fit in there perfectly um, and welded that gap out there too. There was a gap in the metal, so I just uh, stuck that piece, that wedge shape piece in there, welded that out on both sides, uh, got that. What I'm gonna do now is sand it up and I'm thinking about welding that seam out on the top. I'm, I'm gonna show it to you. Um, I just don't want, you know, I can, I can paint it and probably fill it in with paint, but my concern is water getting down in there and um, it can only strengthen it. So um, let me stand it up and I'll show it to you. So this is a gap that I'm talking about along where the two uh, plates were joined together along the top. Um, my problem is uh, welding it. I probably need to put something there for a guide to run the, um, the welding uh, head along as I weld it. Um, you kind of, but with me with bad eyesight, even though I've got a corrective lens in the welding hood, um, it, it's very hard sometimes to see, especially if you're making long welds, you kind of run off track. But let me see what I can do and I'll bring you back when I figure out what I'm going to do with it. So what I did is stuck this piece of tube steel up there. I might try running a bead along it. Um, what I'm going to do first is take a torch and heat it up. Um, you get it, but lay down better weld if you uh, preheat something or it's preheated. Uh, as you go along and weld metal, the hotter the metal gets that you're welding from you welding on it, it seems like the better the weld becomes. But anyways, I'll bring you back and show you what happened. So I did it, it kind of, it came out okay. I'm just kind of uh, taking a flapper disc and uh, going through it and, and cleaning it up and smoothing it over, kind of rounding it over. What I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to go get a couple of uh, cheap, those sponge paint uh, brushes and paint the inside edges where it's going to butt up against the uh, frame of, of the truck. Paint those, um, paint some other spots that I just want to get a one coat on before I uh, uh, spray it. What my plan is, do that let it dry, put it back on the truck. The Corvette is going out for new tire inspection and alignment on Monday. Um, probably what I'm gonna do is spray it while the vet is not in, around here. Um, spray it while it's on the truck. So I'll, I'll get the areas with the uh, brush that I can't get with a spray gun on the truck and uh, do that but that's probably going to do it for this chapter i'll bring you back in uh, next chapter and it'll probably be back on the truck and uh, being prepared for being sprayed thanks for watching guys hit that like button subscribe